that, you know, is, is, is appropriate and khalas. I don't have anything to be worried about anyone saying, oh yeah, well how come Islam says this or how come Islam says that? Hey, hey, that's the deen of Allah. You got a problem with it? You got a problem with Allah. You know, that's just really, that's what it boils down to. You got a problem with it? You got a problem with Allah. No problem. No problem for me. You will deal with your creator on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. My job is to bring you the religion as it was revealed. I don't have to make any, you know, twists and, and do, you know, backflips and bend over backwards to try to make you happy and, and satisfied and content with the teachings of Islam. You don't like them? Allah ma'ak, Habibi. Go to where you deserve to go. As for us, we're very much unapologetic about the religion and we're proud of it. And no one else, no one else has the right to say that even though they do. And I am amazed when I uh, watch certain debates uh, between Christians and atheists. Um, I am amazed at the confidence that the Christian has in dealing with atheists. They're actually very unapologetic. And they, they speak uh, as though they have some really some substance to what they're teaching. And even though they're void of real substance, they are very much in your face. You turn around and you find a Muslim, you know, struggling to put words together to be able to communicate a subject to the, uh, to the atheist. It's pathetic. It's pathetic that a Christian that has, is upon a false religion, has more confidence and more eloquence and a better approach than a Muslim who's upon the truth. And if anything, it signifies the weakness that we have in ourselves. And in our adherence to our religion, in our propagation of our religion. Not that Christianity has any substance or any validity to it whatsoever. But pay attention to these subtleties, because they do make a difference. And see where you at, you know? And like, like I read this interesting post about the, you know, you really don't see a, a, a Christian. You, you will hardly ever in your entire life see a Christian on Eid al-Fitr, uh, putting on, uh, you know, celebrating Eid. Celebrating Eid in any way, shape or form. Yani the most a, a Christian will say to you or a non-Muslim will say to you is Happy Eid if he's uh, familiar with that. Turn around, you see the Muslims, you know, putting on Christmas clothes and, uh, and Santa Claus hats and going around, Ho, 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 Merry Christmas everyone. Shut the hell up, man. Man, shut the hell up. Man, be quiet, man, be quiet. Go, to, go home and don't leave the house. You pathetic, useless uh, creature. You humiliating, what you may call it, man. Wallah aib, ya Sheikh, wallah aib. Wallah, the, 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 the kafir has more dignity. The disbeliever has more dignity in his false religion than the Muslim has in his religion, ya khi. It's mind blowing, ya khi. You don't see none of them going out of their way to make, you, to make you happy. Why are you going out of your way to make them happy so you can feel that you belong and that you're part of... No! To hell with them. You don't have to feel like you belong. Belong where? With a group of people that believe that God be, has begotten a son? Or they celebrate any festivity for whatever reason? Or even you want to join them on New Year's for whoever join them on New Year's and so on and so forth? And that's what you guys need to calculate into your mind. It's, it's weird, it's so weird that they don't go out of their way and even if they did, it's because they don't have any really religious teachings to uphold. Whereas you have strict, explicit teachings that warn you against behaving this way, then the Muslims go out of their way to disobey Allah Azza wa Jal to please the disbelievers. And what is the end result? They will be displeased with you as well. Look, I'm, I love football. I love football. I play football. I watch football. I was a Liverpool fan because of Muhammad Salah. The day I saw Muhammad Salah wearing this retarded, uh, sorry, somebody told me not to use the word retarded, wearing this ridiculous outfit with a Christmas tree with his wife and kids. Wallahi, every time I see Liverpool, I hope, him, I hope that they lose every single game. From, I hope his whole career comes to an end. I hope the career of Muhammad Salah comes to a crashing over his head so that Allah Azza wa Jal will make him realize that his football is not going to take him to Jannah. What will take him to Jannah is his obedience to Allah. I don't care if his football career comes to an end, if he will repent to Allah because of this. I want him to stop scoring goals. I'm hoping he will stop because maybe he will connect. He say, aha, uh aha, -huh, uh -huh. maybe Allah is punishing me for whatever. You know, for, for my 
ridiculousness. Because a lot of people left comments from like, Shia, what are you doing? Yani? What do you want? Yani? What do you want? What, who told you? What are you trying to? Who, who do you think yani, the Liverpool fans are going to become Muslim as soon as they see you put in a, a, a Christmas outfit? And so those are the things that really I, I, the mind doesn't grasp. They, you think that you're actually gaining something? Wallah, it will backfire. It will explode in your face. Allahu alam, how many people probably put now Muhammad Salah, just forget about this guy. It doesn't even exist as far as I'm concerned. Not that it matters, but I'm just giving you a, a, a small example that you can relate to that whenever we do these things to make them happy, you're not going to win. You will not win. You will not win. You will lose in the dunya and in the akhirah. So make your choice properly from now, you know? Let's make the proper choice and please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. طيب. ولكن فنقول نعم الوجه الرابع أن هذا سبب 